to learn about the pH scale and how to calculate the pH, pOH, and the ion concentrations of solutions, aqueous solutions. We've all heard of the pH scale before, and we know that it starts at 0, which is a lie, and ends at 14, which is also a lie. And we know that 7 is considered to be neutral, like water. Why 7? It's kind of a random number to be in the middle of the scale, I think, anyway. Acids would be anything with a pH less than 7. Bases would be anything with a pH greater than 7. So where does this number, these numbers come from? Well, water by itself stays together most of the time. In fact, if you look at a water solution, just pure water, then it's going to be 55 molar with respect to the water concentration, meaning it's 55 moles of H2O stuck together in every liter. However, every once in a while, and a certain proportion of it, specifically, will break apart, and it will form the hydrogen ion, or hydronium ion, and the hydroxide ion. However, the concentration of these two ions in solution is 10 to the negative 7th. So that means the molarity is 10 to the negative 7th, which is 0 0.6 zeros and then a 1. So the pH scale, or the pH, is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you took the negative log of 10 to the negative 7, that would be 7. So the pH of neutral water is 7. If you want to think of logs, if you don't have much experience with that, think of logs as meaning 10 to the what? And additionally, we can calculate, if we know the pH of a solution, we can calculate the hydrogen ion concentration by taking 10 to the negative pH. The hydroxide ion concentration is going to be inversely proportional to it with respect to change. If I take this that simulation right here, we look at the water. You can see that there's an even amount of blue and red dots. The blue represents the hydroxide ions. The red represents the hydronium or hydrogen ions in the solution. And you can see that the concentration of the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion in pH 7 water are equal. They're both 10 to the negative 7th. But if you have an acidic solution where the concentration of the hydrogen ion increases, you can see there's substantially more red dots now and very few blue ones. As this concentration increases, the amount of hydroxide ions decrease accordingly. And the reason that happens is because when you have a buildup of hydrogen ions around hydroxide ions, they're going to neutralize each other to form water. So as you if you have an acidic solution, which has an increased amount of hydrogen ions, it's going to eliminate the hydroxide ions floating in solution. However, the concentration of hydrogen times the hydroxide ion is always going to be equal to 10 to the negative 14. Okay. So, the pH again is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. The pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide. Since the ion concentrations multiplied by each other equal 10 to the negative 14. The pH plus the pOH is always going to be equal to 14. Okay, so if you have a high concentration of H plus, you are going to have a low concentration of hydroxide. If you have a high concentration of hydroxide, it will neutralize any of the H plus ions floating in solution and therefore it will, not any, but most of, and you'll have a low concentration of H+. This constant right here is known as the Kw, which is an equilibrium constant, we'll get more into equilibrium in another video. Um, basically it likes to maintain this um, product um, when water is in equilibrium. Pause. Now the pH scale is not a linear function. Since it's a logarithmic function, what that means is, for example, if you have a pH of 4, it is not twice as acidic as a pH of 8. It doesn't work like that. Going over one increment on the pH scale, so if you go from a pH of 7 to a pH of 6, you're going to have 10 times the amount of hydrogen ion concentration. If you go from a pH of 7 to a pH of 5, you're going to have 100 times pH of 7 to pH of 4, you're going to have 1,000 times. To 3 would be 10,000 times, and so on. So each 
each integer you move on the pH scale is a factor of 10. So a pH of 1 is 10 times as acidic as a pH of 2. Another thing I want to point out about the scales, it doesn't really stop at 0. In, this, in labs this year, we've used acid that's been at concentrations of 3 molar and 6 molar. If you were to take the negative log of something greater than 1, you would end up with a negative value. So there are actually, and I've said this to you when we do labs, is that you are now handling an acid with a pH that is off the normal scale, meaning it has a negative value. Additionally, if you have sodium hydroxide at a concentration, that's a strong base, at a concentration greater than 1 molar, you have a pH that is over 14. So the scale doesn't really end there. That's just this end point, you would have a molar concentration of hydrogen ions of 1, and at this point you would have a hydroxide concentration molarity of 1. Now over here, I've set up a little demo using red cabbage. Each of these test tubes contains a different pH buffer, meaning that this solution has a pH of 1. We'll get into how to calculate buffer concentrations and how to prepare a buffer in another video. This has a pH of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, all the way up to 14. And these were clear solutions until I added just a squirt of red cabbage, which is a lie because it's purple. And you can see that a pH of 7 is just that concentration diluted, since that's what it was made in. Now what you can do is this, you can perform colorimetric tests to analyze different solutions to see whether they're acidic or basic. And a solution I've prepared is of citric acid. You might go on a limb and say this is going to have a pH of less than 7. Now let's see if we can prove that and actually figure out what it might be. So, you can see that this color, comparing these, probably is closest to a pH of somewhere between 3 and 4, because the color is somewhere in between those two, we can say that. So I'm going to approximate the, cons the pH of this solution to be 3.5. So now, knowing that the pH is 3.5, I can figure out all of the other ion concentrations in that as well. If I know the pH is 3.5 and pH and pOH add up to 14, well, the pOH, that's a, go. the pOH is going to be 10.5. You could also calculate the H plus ion concentration using a red marker, of course, by raising 10 to the negative 3.5. And you could calculate the hydroxide ion concentration by raising 10 to the negative 10.5 plus. Now we plug that into our calculator, we get a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4. And coincidentally, we not really coincidentally, but we get a hydroxide concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the negative 11. And just to check ourselves to make sure that we did this right, we know that when you multiply the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, it should combine to get you 10 to the negative 14. And when we plug that in as well, we get 10 to the negative 14. So knowing the pH, you can calculate the pOH, you can calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, and you can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration.